mini split leaking refrigerant and how to find those leaks. In today's video, I'm gonna provide you with three techniques that I use to find refrigerant leaks for mini splits. And I'm also gonna to explain to you how you can fix those refrigerant leaks. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, this is Taddy Digest. Let's get started. Before we dive into the technique I use to find the leaks, we're gonna look at a typical mini split with one outdoor, one indoor unit, and I'm gonna show you the most common areas where I find those leaks. Here's the outdoor unit for this mini split. This is a three ton model, 36,000 BTU. And on the outdoor unit, where do I find those leaks? First, it's always the flare connections. We always have a suction line and a liquid line, right? A larger pipe, gas pipe, and a smaller pipe, liquid pipe. And installation sometimes is done improperly. And we either have a poor flare that's made or we have a loose connection. And that's because somebody didn't do a nitrogen pressure test. They didn't tighten these flare connections up with a digital torque wrench. Instead, they use an adjustable wrench and they didn't use the torque specs that are in the manuals. The outdoor unit of a mini split needs to be up off the ground. It needs to be on a pad and it needs to be on some type of stand. Why? Because if the outdoor coil is in the dirt, then that is gonna cause a leak. I have seen where outdoor units, the pad sunk in the ground and then the dirt was on the bottom of the outdoor coil. And guess where we had the leak? We had the leak on the bottom of the outdoor coil. I've actually got a video replacing an outdoor coil in a outdoor unit, a mini split, and I'll put that link down below so you can see that. And it shows you how to actually replace a coil, but keep your outdoor unit up off the ground, the mini split outdoor unit, so that you don't have a leak in the bottom row of the outdoor coil. Now this is installation as well. We talked about those flare connections, not using the proper tools, not making the right flare because you don't know how to use a flaring tool maybe. This is another one, installation, right? When you go to route the outdoor unit's power cable into the unit, this right here is 10 to wire and you can see look at it it's touching the copper now this is not good because once the coating is rubbed off this wire then it's going to short and it's going to trip the breaker and it's also going to rub through this copper and it's going to cause a leak and i haven't had this a lot but in the field i've had this at least three times so make sure that when you're routing your power wire into your unit and connecting to your terminal block, uh, that you make sure that this is away from the copper. See this, just tuck it in here or maybe put a piece of conduit over it or some insulation to keep it from touching copper inside the unit that's containing refrigerant. Make sure you use some wire ties, that's pretty easy. This is the indoor unit for this mini split system. This is called an indoor wall mount air handler. This is the most common indoor unit type for a mini split. You have cassettes, they go in the ceiling. They're called ceiling cassettes or one-way cassettes or 360 ceiling cassettes. You have ducted type indoor units for mini splits. You have consoles that go near the floor against the wall. And there's all kinds of different indoor unit types for mini splits. Let me take this one apart and show you where the most common place for the indoor unit for mini splits leak. Took the cover off so you can see it contains a coil. It also contains a couple flare connections so we can have leaks at those flare connections, but we can also have a leaking indoor coil. And I've changed a lot more indoor coils or replaced a lot more indoor coils than I have outdoor coils. Why? Because of the environment, because of the conditions. It's in the home and you have household chemicals. You have condensation mixed with chemicals. The coil gets dirty, dirt sets on there, and then those chemicals eat through the coil. So that's why you're gonna have more indoor coil leaks than you do have outdoor coil leaks. And you can also have those flare connections leaking. Those flare connections could be inside behind the bottom of your indoor air handler, or they could be on the other side of the wall. Let's go look at where the flare connections would be for this indoor unit and I'm gonna talk about those techniques here in a minute. We're on the other side of the wall where the flare connections would be located, but the installer chose to actually remove those connectors, those flare connections, and just braze the pipes together. And this is common for installers to do this because 
They just have one less area that they have to check for leaks when they're doing the nitrogen pressure test. Something you can do to prevent the indoor coal from leaking is regular maintenance. Of course, it's got filters that need to be cleaned. It's got a pan that holds water that can build up with some type of mold or sediment or mildew. We need to clean that pan. We need to clean the wheel. Most importantly, we need to clean the coil. If you don't know how to clean a mini split, I've got several videos and I'll put a link down in the description that shows you how to clean a mini split. Now we're going to do a little recap before we move forward to make sure you got a full understanding of where those leaks are and how to prevent them. So number one was obviously flare connections. This is something that is done during installation. Uh, we've got a flare connection that's not tight. We've got digital torque wrench that wasn't used. We've got a uh, not properly flared pipe. So make sure you know how to use a flaring tool. If you don't, I've got a video for that. Go check that video out of how to use a flaring tool. Uh, make sure that you keep the outdoor unit off the ground. Make sure that it's on a pad or it's on a stand. That way that coal doesn't have dirt on it. Also clean that outdoor coal regularly, annually, once a year. For the indoor unit, of course, we know about the flares now. We gotta make sure we have a proper flare. It's properly tight and you do a pressure test, but make sure you clean the indoor coil. And you also admonish the customer about maybe turning off their unit when they're cleaning their house with those household chemicals they can be drawn in through the fan through the return and into that indoor coil that's a quick recap of where those leaks are also i just forgot one that wire remember that wire that was touching that copper make sure you pull that away during installation so you don't have to go back for a call back and then you find out that oh that was my fault because i did not properly install and pay attention to what i was doing we just did a little recap where those leaks are most commonly found and how to prevent them. Now let's move forward to those techniques. Visual, drop the pan. Do you see any oil? Take your finger, put it in here in the pan. If there's oil in the pan, maybe if there's oil on the bottom of the cool, be careful touching the fins. It can cut you, but there could be some oil right here. Visually, we can see if there's oil and if there is, that's a possible indication that we have a leak. Check your flare connections. Put your finger on there, look at it. Is there any oil? There's no oil here. Probably don't have a leak, but if we do have oil, there could be a leak. Same thing inside. See if there's two pieces of copper touching, if there's any oil on that copper. See if the outdoor unit has any oil on the pan, yeah. So take the top off if you have to. Take the front cover off. Put your hand in the bottom of the unit. There could be oil in the bottom of the unit. Put your hand in there, make sure the power's off, and then if there is, could be an outdoor coil leaking. So visual would be number one. And that's the easiest way for you to start to understand where that leak could be. Now moving on to my most favorite way to find that leak. That is with a nitrogen pressure test. Different manufacturers have recommendations for how much pressure you should put in the system. My recommendation is at least 300 and I would say probably 500 for you to see that leak, especially if it's in a flare connection or to be able to hear it because it may be very small. But what do we hope to do? We hope to use our nitrogen to put pressure in the system and to maybe create a noise where that leak is so maybe we can hear it, where it's coming from, whether indoor or outdoor. And then we hope to be able to find the bubbles with our soap because when we spray the soap on our flare connections, or over our coil, then we're gonna to begin to see bubbles appear where that leak is. So we're using nitrogen, we're using a regulator, we're connecting the yellow hose to our nitrogen regulator, and we're connecting our blue hose to our service access fitting on our mini splits service valve. If you wanna actually see this be done, I've got a video and it's titled, How to Find a Refrigerant Leak, and I'll put that link to that video down in the description so you can see how to do a nitrogen pressure test. This is probably my most favorite and the most common thing that I do in the field to find that refrigerant leak. Now let's move forward and look at another technique that I commonly use in the field. Leak detectors. This is a very common way of finding a leak very fast compared to the nitrogen pressure test or even the visual test sometimes but this could aid you in the visual test. So once you find there's some visible oil, take your leak detector, run over that area, and if it starts going off, then boom, you know for sure there's a leak. Uh, this is a, something you need to do before your nitrogen pressure test, if there's a significant leak. 
Uh, maybe the customer needs to have air conditioning. They need to be charged back up because maybe they're on oxygen, they're elderly and it's a hundred degrees outside. So you get them charged back up, but you're using your leak detector. This is actually a new leak detector that I just got. And we're gonna use this in today's video. This is the DTEC Stratus. This is a refrigerant leak detector and portable monitor. And this is from Inficon. These are the leak detectors that I use. There's other brands out there, but I've actually been using Inficon um, since the beginning of my heating and cooling career. And I love their leak detectors. This is certified to be used for A2L refrigerants. Let's go ahead and open it up and let's put it to use. Now, since I didn't see any oil in the outdoor unit's bottom or the flare connections outside, first place I'm gonna use the leak detector is on the indoor section, the indoor coil. So I'm gonna take and push the power button. It's gonna come on and it's gonna warm up. Now that it's warmed up, you can see it's displaying PPM, which is really cool. If you push the mode button, which is right here, you can switch to the different modes. Super, zeroing, manual zero, and cloud hunting. We're gonna leave it on cloud hunting. And typically what I like to do is I like to go in the middle of the coil because that's you know where I have the leaks. That's the most common spot, but they can also be on the ends. So we're just gonna go right up here in the middle of the coil. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> There's a leak, baby. You know you're leaking. You've been leaking. Look at that. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, we know it's leaking and we found out really quickly. We didn't have to take and do the nitrogen pressure test and then vacuum. We didn't have to recover, uh, then nitrogen pressure test, then vacuum, uh, and then recharge it back up so they can have air. In the meantime, we've got the model serial number and we're ordering a coil get a sweet leak detector like this one. So visual observation, find that oil spot, nitrogen pressure test, use the soap bubbles. Maybe you hear it, then you see those bubbles. Refrigerant leak detector, use that refrigerant leak detector over that area and then it beeps. It's an indication. Well, you found the leak. Final option and an option that I don't use a lot is UV dye. This is a brand easy dye, easy seal, you can use this and you can actually put this inside the refrigeration system, come back in a week, maybe two weeks and use a light or don't use a light. Maybe you can see that dye. If you wanna learn how to put this inside of the system, I've got a link to a video down in the description so you can learn how to use the dye. Don't use this a lot. My go-to is the leak detector, the visual or the nitrogen. But this is also an option that you could utilize, especially if you have a very small leak and it takes a while for that refrigerant to uh, escape from the system. We've covered a lot in this video, lots of different techniques and methods to find those refrigerant leaks. It may get confusing. If it does, then go down below, check out those links that I put in the description because I've labeled every video. That video on how to refine the refrigerant leak, this shows you how to use the nitrogen pressure test method. Uh, the videos on how to replace the indoor coils on mini splits, so you know how to take it apart. Replace the outdoor coils on the mini split, so you know how to take it apart. That flaring video on how to use the flaring tool, all those videos are there for you to learn. And then especially that video on how to vacuum, how to recover, and how to charge a mini split. Go check that out so that you have a full understanding of everything to do with the mini split system. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. You got a question? Remember, questions can lead to new content. So put your questions down below. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want more videos like this? Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. I've got hundreds of videos of live experience as a technician in the field to help you be a better technician. You've been watching Taddy Digest. This was HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.